I'm Stephanie Pincel, and I direct the California Center for Sustainable Communities at UCLA's Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. And for the past decade, we have been looking at the question of building energy use in California, but in specifically in Southern California. And we are really interested in the question of electrification of our energy systems, particularly buildings and transportation. So we're looking at the deployment uh, and how they've been deployed of renewable energy resources, and particularly solar. And the, because the question arises also with increasing energy demand, say we're moving towards electrified ve uh, vehicles, transportation electrification, how much energy do we need for this transition to renewables away from fossil fuels? Are we going to have to be building big solar plants in the desert? Or can we satisfy our need with local energy production on our roofs, on our parking lots, and other places in the city that's already been developed? Because as long as, as if we expand out to the desert, we're encroaching on other ecological resources and it might have some detrimental effects. So in order to do that, we have uh, documented how much energy buildings use, and by size, by age, by location, and what we find is that in wealthier neighborhoods in Los Angeles, probably not too surprising, per capita people use 10 times more energy than they do in poorer parts of LA like South LA. Even though the houses there in South LA are much less efficient per square foot. They're leaky and they are high energy users per square foot. But what's happened is the newer houses, especially in affluent areas, are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And even though California has some of the most stringent building energy codes for energy conservation, they're so big, they simply continue to be using more and more energy. You can't catch up with better insulation, in other words. And so the question becomes, well, how much energy is enough? without having to continue to catch up on increased energy use by building solar arrays out in the desert and other places where birds are affected, you, you know, that competes with other animals that live on that land and plants and the rest. So it leads us to this question of energy sufficiency. How much energy do we need to be happy? How much energy do we need to satisfy basic needs, including, say, the internet and television? Um, how much energy do we really um, find will satisfy our well-being? And that is, I think, the question going forward, because we are concerned with these findings that we're never going to have enough energy for the demands as the demands continue to increase, particularly with vehicle electrification. So I think what our work shows is that um, we can't continue just to produce more and more energy simply because people feel they need more and more for their increased lifestyles. And we need to be able to deploy enough energy locally with battery storage systems such that we can satisfy that need and not continue to increase our ecological footprint further and further and further out. So we're exploring these questions and trying to instigate, initiate a conversation in the region about energy sufficiency and inequality. Because we know also that electrification means higher priced energy. Fossil fuels, one of their virtues and their problems is they're really cheap and they provide a lot of power for a small amount of um, energy compared to things like solar. So what are the trade-offs? How much air pollution do we want to maintain? burning fossil fuels, natural gas in our region, so that we can increase our consumption? How much are we willing to give up so that we have cleaner air quality, less greenhouse gas emissions, and a better future life for the planet, and really for ourselves? So we, um, we're, our work is engaged deeply in that, and I think it's something that we need to talk about as a community. 
There's no perfect solution. There's no silver bullet. We know that things like nuclear are really very, very dangerous, even though they have this promise of energy forever, which is really probably not accurate because there's a huge carbon footprint with nuclear too. Um, but we do need to understand what the challenges are going forward. We need to understand that we're all in it together. My quality of life depends on your quality of life. My health depends on your health, as we've seen with this pandemic. Um, and so as a region, as a people, we need to think about what's enough how do we satisfy our needs so that we're happy, our children are happy, our planet has a future, and reduce our footprints in an equitable and just way so the most disadvantaged aren't in a position of having 10 times less energy consumption than the most affluent. Of course, to do that, we also need to think about how to encourage and, and incentivize and make the houses of the least advantaged people better to live in too. How do we get there? Where do we find the resources to do that? And clearly, energy inequity, as we've seen, is also wealth inequity. And how much wealth inequity should our society tolerate going forward such that we're all better off? And I think it really does take us back to things like um, taxation and um, Fin figuring out how you internalize the cost of your externalities because if you're using more and more energy you're externalizing your cost on everybody else that solar in the desert is not free it externalizes your cost you need bigger transmission lines and so on and we all pay for that so what's fair going forward how do we internalize those costs how do we make the society more equitable including in this very very important area of energy sufficiency because we as the climate gets hotter, low-income people might like to have a little air conditioning too, but if they can't afford it, if the grid isn't there to support it, with local photovoltaic electricity generation, we're not going to get there. So I think it's important for us to put our heads together to figure out what, we're, what we would like from the state, from the government, because it's our government, to begin to address so that we move towards a situation of much, much greater energy equity and sufficiency for all.